In these last few sessions, we've laid out the four ingredients that drive the value of a business. The cash flows you get from existing assets, the expected growth in those cash flows, the risk in those cash flows as captured in a, dis in a discount rate, and the point in time in the future where you apply closure on those cash flows, the big terminal value number. In this session, I hope to build on that concept. In particular, I want to talk about how to change the value of a business, hopefully, how to enhance the value of a business. Note that I said value enhancement, not price enhancement. Two very different concepts. In value enhancement, everything you do has to, has to flow through one of the four ingredients. You either have to find a way to increase cash flows from existing assets, or you have to push up the growth rate that you see in the future, or you have to reduce the risk and the discount rate you apply to those cash flows, or you have to push off the day of closure where your company becomes a stable going concern or you liquidate the business. Everything you see in restructuring and value enhancement has to go through one of those four pathways. And in this session, I hope to lay out those pathways. Now that we have all the ingredients to value a company, the cash flows, the growth rates, the discount rates, and the closure factor, the terminal value, we can value any company, right? I want to talk a little bit now about how to change the value of a company. How to, because if you run a company, the question you're often faced with is, how do I increase the value of the company, not just maintain the value? So I want to talk about value enhancement. Before I get started, though, I also have to note that when many companies talk about value enhancement, what they're talking instead about is price enhancement. And that's a very different thing. To illustrate the difference, I'd like to show you two graphs. These two graphs both look at companies that change their names. They're separated by about four years. The first study happened in the late 90s, and it looked at companies that added dot-com to their names. Remember, this was the peak of the dot-com boom. And not surprisingly, when they looked at these companies that added dot-com to their names and changed nothing about their businesses, they saw the prices jump by a lot, 100%, 150%. Now remember, if they're not changing anything about their businesses, their intrinsic value shouldn't have changed. But their price did jump. You're saying, this is good. Why waste your time on cash flows and growth rates and discount rates when all you have to do is change your name? But what the market gives, it takes away. The second study also looked at companies that changed their names. But this was in 2002, after the dot-com bust. And these companies removed dot-com from their names. The market reacted positively. What I'm trying to say is, if you try to make your job increasing prices or enhancing prices, you're going to be dancing to a tune that the market calls. And that tune might not be the best one for your company. So rather than focus on things you can do to increase prices, I'd like to talk about how to enhance value. And here are the four ways you can increase value. And they go back to the four pillars that we used to talk about valuation. To increase the value of a company, you can try to increase the cash flows from existing assets. Run them more efficiently. To increase value, you can try to increase your growth rate or enhance the value you get from growth, either by becoming more efficient about, about running your existing assets or maybe finding a better combination of reinvestment to deliver more value from your growth. The reason I say more value from your growth rather than higher growth is some companies might actually be worth more growing at a lower rate rather than a higher rate if their growth is not good, if it's destroying value. Third, you can try to lower your discount rate. And the obvious way might be to change the mix of debt and equity, but there might be others. And the fourth and final way is you might put off that day of reckoning when you become a mature company, a stable company. How are you going to do this? If you can build up your competitive advantages and barriers to entry, maybe you will not become a stable growth company for, for 10 years rather than five. So increase your cash flows, try to get more value from growth, lower your cost of capital, push off the day of reckoning. So I'm going to talk about how to change value using those four basic approaches. Let's start with the first one. How to increase cash flows from existing assets. Let me break down how we measure cash flows. We start with operating income. We net out taxes. Then we net out reinvestment, right? If that is the case, here are the places you can go to increase your cash flows from existing assets. You can run your assets more efficiently. You can cut costs that are really not creating any value. What I hear when you say that is higher margins, higher operating income on the same revenues. That's going to increase your value. If you can pay less in taxes on that operating income, and I don't mind, I mean to sound unpatriotic when I do this, but I don't think any company should view it as its objective to maximize taxes paid. So to the degree that the law allows you, if you can minimize taxes paid, you pay less taxes on the same operating income, you increase your cash flows, and you increase value. 
And if you can reinvest less to maintain your existing assets, you can increase value. So basically, you're looking for places in your existing cash flow where you can get more cash flows and higher value. If you're coming into a firm which is an old mature firm, this might be the place to look for higher value. Is can you cut costs? Can you increase cash flows from existing assets? Second stop in the road, look at your growth rate. As we've structured growth, to grow faster, you either have to reinvest more or reinvest better. Reinvesting more will tend to increase your growth rate almost always, but reinvesting more might not always increase your value. Because here's the qualifier. Reinvesting more creates value only if the return on capital you earn is higher than the cost of capital. So let's step back. Here are the two ways you can reinvest more. You can try to find more projects internally, but that's going to take you a long time, or you can do a big acquisition. You can always buy growth, but if you pay too much for that growth, it's not going to increase your value as a company. You can try to improve your return on capital in existing investments, and I like to think of return on capital as broken down into two components. There's your operating margin, and the second is how efficiently you deploy your capital, your sales to capital ratio. So if you can increase how much revenues you get for every dollar of capital you've invested or improve your margins, it shows up as a higher return on capital. I would argue that almost everything we talk about in business, even if it's pure marketing, will show up in one of these, these numbers and will ultimately show up in value. Now, when we talk about growth, we tend to think of different ways companies can grow, and we often make the mistake of treating them all as equivalent. But there's some very interesting research that's emerged over time that looks at which growth approaches are most likely to create value and which ones are most likely to fall short. This is from a McKinsey study that I saw a few years ago, which looked at companies that had adopted different growth strategies over time and then asked a follow-up question. How much value was created by each growth strategy? Ranked from best to worst. By far the best strategy McKinsey found across companies was a strategy of coming up with new products. Think of Apple in the last decade. The iPod, the iPhone, the iPad created tremendous amounts of value, new products that break through into new markets. Why doesn't every company try it? They do, but only a few succeed. And if you do succeed, there's no better strategy.